Hello people, my name's Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. So I have magical powers beyond any that you have ever seen. Well, I like to think so. So I do a lot of traditional witchcraft. I follow the old ways, those that have been handed down to me through the generations. Today's video is part of my mini series looking at the elemental witchcraft that people practice today. As I'm sure you all know, there are four elements. Earth, air, fire and water. And so far, I have only looked at fire, water and air. So today's video is going to look at the earth element as part of my mini series and for those of you who haven't seen the previous ones I do recommend that you watch them and I will put the playlist up here for you to binge on after you've watched this video. So do watch the playlist because even though there are four videos to it it is all part of one whole thing which is elemental witchcraft. So we're gonna look at this. What do these have in common? A bowl of rock salt taken from the Himalayas some tumble stones of carnelian. A small pot of wood ash. A pair of gold scissors and some silver rings. They all represent earth elements, having been mined from the earth or made by the earth. Now the earth element is the root element of all the Elemental Witchcraft series. The earth is the most powerful it holds all the other elements in its power, so to speak, and in its grasp. It can control them and it can overcome them, every single one. Easily seen in nature, for example, the earth pushes the fires of Chimera out here in Turkey. Old Faithful, that marvellous water gazer, which the earth pushes out with absolute regularity. And the earth holds the air within its atmosphere, keeping it in touch with the planet. The earth is actually a guardian spirit, one of the 12 great guardian spirits that monitor and care for the earth and mankind and all its flora. And the earth spirit is part of those. Mother Earth is referred to by many different cultures in many ways. And we have the Gaia Earth Goddess mother cults or hypotheses that she's a single living organism which absolutely because an earth spirit is an earth spirit and there's only one of them so the earth is the root and the holder of all the elements and this makes it the most powerful and the most common and the most used without you actually realizing it for example just walking outside in your bare feet is connecting with the earth and you will be drawing in the earth power through the soles of your feet and up through your body, which is why it's so pleasurable walking on soft spring grass in your bare feet. You're not just getting that wonderful feeling of being out and free, you're getting the benefits of the mother earth power. But if you ever cast a circle, because you cast a circle on the ground and you're casting it downwards, you don't really cast circles above your head. I mean, we can do, but generally you cast a circle downwards. That automatically accesses the Earth's power. You're automatically calling in and using Earth power within your circle. My three most popular elements for casting a circle are salt, candles and crystals and the salt and the crystals are both earth elements in themselves as we looked at in the beginning of this video you can invoke the earth using anything that was mined from the earth and salt is mined so putting salt on the outside of your circle to define its boundaries uses the earth element and if you want to bring an earth element in to any spell anything with metal stone glass salt all of these elements are part of the earth spirit and so therefore they invoke that earth element as a result it is very difficult for me to say here is a spell 
you know, using the earth because you sort of do it all the time. I like to occasionally and consciously bring earth, air, fire and water elements into a spell, but mostly you don't need to because it's already there. The earth element is the most powerful, as I have repeatedly said, of all the elements. And as a result, I use it the most when casting a circle to banish demonic entities. And believe it or not, I do this quite a lot. And I use carnelian stones to facilitate this. They have a very, very strong energy to them, which is why I find them the most useful for casting a circle when dealing with demonic or bad jujus or nasty entities. You will naturally use the earth element in pretty much every witchcraft spell that you do without ever realising it. If you're picking flowers from the ground, earth element coming in, you're using a metal bowl, oh, earth element. Salt, earth element. Stones, earth element. Crystals, earth element. Therefore, I don't really need to give you a specific spell. However, I do think it's a good idea to thank the earth for all her kind, loving goodness and honour her, not worship, because the earth spirit does not require worship, but honour her for her devotion to us mere mortals. And so a little altar would never go amiss. And on the altar, I like to put the four elements of earth, air, fire and water. This is my current altar, which has many stones and crystals on it for the earth. A bowl of moon water, for the water element. And I of course bring in the air with my incense burner. And finally, candles representing fire. So I'd love to know in the comments what you use as an earth element generally in your spells. For me, I would say it is my pendulum, which is made of rock crystal. And because I have a rock spirit in it, I have a great connection to the earth. Do let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a subscribe and a like. Don't forget to check out our coven meetings on Patreon and I will see you in my next video.